Joining us now, I should say, drum rolls <laughs> all the way from France. <laughs> Bonjour, bienvenue, oh, Madame wow, Ojinika so Genix. Wow. Okay. <laughs> she stole my welcome. I was <laughs> keeping my French for you. Sure, I'm going to do it. Did I do it right? Avec <laughs> stories <laughs> trending <laughs> around the world. Yes. Happy bienvenue. New Year, y'all. Happy, happy Bonjour. New Year. Bonne année. Il <laughs> reste <Easy. Easy. laughs> <Easy. laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy But guess what was trending yesterday? Ayo's hey. birthday, happy birthday. Can we sing for Ayo? Thank Ayo, so happy birthday. birthday. And guess what? We have a surprise if my producer oh. can come in. Yay! Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. And then, Thank okay. you. Oh, oh, well, but can, I'm not taking wow. that hug because this was from your husband. Oh. Yeah, he wanted to surprise you. And then, where are the pictures? Where is uh, Ayo's picture? Yeah, look oh, how beautiful so she was. Much. Let me confess, yeah. I was part of the plan. Hey, thank oh, you gee. so much. Then thank I lived at your plan. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, if you can see the flowers one more time, oh. I mean, it's so beautiful. I, you, you are such a great addition thank to you. your rice family. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, happy oh, birthday. Oh. I know that women don't tell their age, but you'll tell I'll me I'll tell you later. Okay, yeah. oh. <laughs> happy birthday, happy birthday. Thank and you. well this done, I your oh. husband, Mario. Yeah. Myra, 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 the essay. great, super well Myra. Done. <laughs> super Myra. Well, all right, shall we begin what's trending now? We miss Dr. Abati, I wish she was here today. Yeah. Well, let's begin what's trending. With reactions trailing the leaked memo from the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs instructing the Accountant General of the Federation to transfer the sum of 585 million Naira from the National Social Investment Program bank account to the bank account of a private individual. The memo, which was signed by the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Beta Edu, was titled Mandate for Payment of Grant for Vulnerable Groups in Akwaibom, Cross River, Lagos, and Ogun States, respectively. In a statement on Friday, January 5th, the minister's aide claimed that the transfer followed due process and that the private account belonged to Bridget Mojisola, the project accountant for the Grants for Vulnerable Groups scheme, adding that it is legal in the civil service for a project accountant to receive payments, use funds legally, and retire all receipts as evidence of the project. Well, the accountant general of the federation, Oluwa Tony Madein, however, denied approving the minister's request, stating that no bulk money is supposed to be made to an individual's account in the name of Project Accountant, eliciting varied reactions on social media. Let's take this tweet from Omotaya, who posted a video of the minister when she assured Nigerians of transparency within her ministry. This is a tweet. Well, he wrote, Beta Edu assured Nigerians that the money will be transferred directly from CBN to beneficiaries. However, she took a U-turn, transferring more than half a billion naira to a single private account. Oniyelu Bridget Mojisola. Let's take a look at that video before we take more reactions. What we can assure Nigerians is the fact that this is a very transparent system that is traceable from the CBN account directly to the account of the beneficiaries. For Nigerians who do not have accounts and uh, do not have the NIN, we are actually working to open accounts and money wallets for all of these persons um, so that they can have their money sent directly to them. We would equally be pasting out the list of beneficiaries at the different communities, which would carry the uh, vulnerable pensioners, the vulnerable veterans, and the uh, wives of fallen heroes, as well as other um, areas of concern where they were not fully captured. All right, this is what we are asking for, transparency. And she did promise, this was back in October. Actually, this event was uh, during that uh, conditional transfer for 15 million vulnerable households. You would recall, even just, you know, during the Buhari administration, there was also, you know, this hula baloo, could I call it, at this point, saying that we have to use, like, you know, electronic transfer yeah. at this point. But I don't understand what happened here and where, you know, Beta Edu dropped the ball. Because it is easy. He, she has said it, that she was going to go through the CBN and it was going to be transparent. But, you know, they've called for an investigation. Uh, uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has done the right thing to call for uh, a probe at this point. But, you know, people are saying, what sort of investigation? I mean, th this is simple and clear. I believe you even read out, you know, some policies yeah. at this point. Let me take some more tweets. This is from Chooks, who wrote, 
uh, better should step aside while the government launch a full-scale investigation into the sleaze going on in that ministry. I have said this before, social intervention under any guise in Nigeria is a scam. A large chunk of the appropriated funds are always stolen. Well, Daniel Rega wrote, uh, Better Edu is still a sitting minister despite ongoing investigation into the allegations, but Halima Shehu was quickly suspended over allegations. What a government. This reeks of double standard. Well, let me just give you a summary of this Halima story, which Omotaya detailed with the hashtag BetterGate. Uh, well, he wrote, uh, one, President Bola Tinubu a few days ago announced the suspension of one Halima Shehu, the CEO of National Social Investment Program, an agency under the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation for Financial Misconduct. Two. EFCC operatives subsequently arrested Halima Shehu during interrogation. It was discovered that she moved a whooping 40 billion naira belonging to NSIPA to personal and corporate bank accounts linked to her. Three, Halima Shehu also informed operatives that she moved the 40 billion naira to private accounts linked to her because Dr. Beta Edu, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, was transferring monies from the NSIPA account to personal accounts. She reportedly alleged that over 3 billion naira has been moved so far by Beta, and her action was taken to block her from accessing the 40 billion naira. Well, that, while that conversation was ongoing, a moment written by Beta Edu to the Accountant General of the Federation seeking authorization of payment of 585 million naira to the personal account of Oniyelu Bridget for GVG program in Cross River, Akwaibom, Lagos, and Ogun State surface. By the way, Rufai, yeah. we've got some you know, information that this Bridget is still untraceable. We're still waiting to find out who this Bridget, Bridget is yes. at this point. They are going to trace yes. anybody traceable. The Bridget can remain untraceable. Yes. This is a real national matter. And please, I would like to warn, call for a forensic audit across all the ministries and people that might be involved in the matter. Mm -hmm. We would like to call for a forensic audit, one. Number two, we would like to see a quickened investigation. Yeah. Before you talk, because so that we can put everything together, let me take another a conversation that has been circulating. In the meantime, the minister is said to have approved funds for flight tickets and airport taxes for the ministry staff to Kogi, a state with no commercial airport. The approval was contained in another leaked internal memo dated November 6, 2023. The memo was titled The Disbursement under the 2023 Grant for Vulnerable Groups Program in Kogi State 2023, signed by Beta Edu. In the memo, the sum of over 72 million naira was appropriated for the minister's advanced team to travel by air for an event in Kogi. Each of the ministers advanced team members, including aides, received the sum of 200,000 naira for flight tickets, 20,000 naira for airport taxi, and local running expenses. The sum of 300,000 naira was earmarked for the minister's air ticket. I mean, Rufai, <laughs> I know that you earlier said that there is no, um, what do you call it, airport in uh, Kogi. No, there, I mean, there are two airports. They're, in, they're, they're, actually, they're, not, they're, no, not, commercial they're not commercial airports. You so cannot no. land in Kogi State with a commercial flight. So we need more details as to what airline took them to that particular so, event. So, so that, 72 million so, is a lot of money. So that's why at this we point. say a forensic audit yes. should suffice. A very holistic forensic audit. I think the audit should go back to any, you know, disbursement made since Better got into the office. Any memo signed, all of them should be scanned through. And it should be double scrutinized as we speak. And also the auxiliary companies that disbursements were made to should also be vetted. Because I'm seeing many stories, although not verified, of some key companies that monies and disbursements were made to. Holistically going forward, I do not know why Pre uh, President Buhari set up this humanitarian ministry. In my own opinion, I believe it should be scrapped. A lot of people have, are advocating because for that. Because yeah. it's always a funnel pipe for corruption. Mm -hmm. And we could have run this independent of any ministry. 
once you set a bureaucratic framework in place, then you open the doors to huge corruption. So going forward, I think an impact assessment should be done on the humanitarian ministry Absolutely. and probably scrapped. Nigeria does not need things like this at this point in time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyways, not today we've been doing humanitarian interventions mm -hmm. and we didn't need a ministry for it. So whoever put that idea in President Buhari's head definitely didn't do a good one. Absolutely. It should be scrapped. We thought it was going to help people, but apparently look at the charade. So early in this government, it stinks. Yeah. The corruption in Tinubu's government, allegations of corruption stinks. In the space of how many days? We're talking about the NCI, uh, uh, NCIPA, yes. those allegations. Also now we're having this one, this allegation. It stinks and it's a blight on this administration. And they should wash themselves off of this excreta yeah. of corruption allegation. They are thinking of the escrita yes. of this. First, it was Halima Shehu. Yeah. Now we are seeing better. I do. I mean, we had from the, uh, same from the same ministry. They had the first, the uh, what do you call it? The pioneer <laughs> of that ministry also is under <laughs> investigation. We're seeing these women, um, you know, go through she's these horrible. I'm so I'm, yeah, she is supposed to be facing EFCC today. Well, let me take a better uh, tweet, which she talked about integrity and trying to defend herself. She said integrity, accountability are. Uh, our watchword. Under my watch, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Elevation, no one will embezzle government funds as before. The plans to tarnish the image of this administration, my person or the ministry will amount to nothing better. We are holding you to that word. I, I really want to that's... know if this is fake document, fake memo. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. the only thing that have... would, would make it all right. Because at this point, there, you know, these these investigations are already. Oji, that's the only thing that would make yeah. sense of this. In fact, yeah, yeah. Um, f lawyer Femi Falano has said that just that memo in itself, yes. it did not implicate her to be investigated or perhaps invited in by the EFCC or security operatives because that memo is a demonstration of an attempt to commit felony. So even yes. without committing felony, Absolutely. it's an attempt to commit based on extant laws on um, you know how, whether money or not should be paid into private accounts. Unfortunately, I don't see how Dr. Beta Edu is going to get herself out of this mess. And I agree totally with that tweet that the same treatment meted out to Halima Shehu in the spirit of fairness and equity should be meted out to Dr. Edu. So in the whilst she's being investigated, suspension immediately. Yes. If the Tinubu administration wants to demonstrate their commitment to anti-corruption and that they take a tough stance against things like this, we should have woken up this morning with an announcement that the, um, Dr. Beta Edu has been suspended. Mm -hmm. Pending investigation, this will send a strong signal, not just to Nigerians that we are serious about fighting corruption, but other MDAs, mm. do you know that memo and the statement by the AGF demonstrates that, that's Accountant General of the, of the Federation, that this perhaps might be happening in other ministries. That's and right. Rufa, even though I get you in terms of scrapping this ministry, to, to be fair, I think we need a ministry such as this because of the peculiarity of what we're facing in Nigeria. Unfortunately, just like the NDDC and other agencies like that, it has become a funnel for just monies that, are, that magically disappear or come under spurious claims and projects where we cannot trace monies. You're saying that it is okay. And thank you for bringing that video out where she assured Nigerians that under her own tenure, in the spirit of transparency, the monies will go directly to the beneficiaries. Yes. What's happened to that plan? What is that excuse for not you know, transferring the monies directly. Then one final thing, a question for the um, Accountant General of the Federation. Yes, she mentioned that in trying to extricate herself from this mess, that she did her due diligence, she, she did not approve um, that money's being spent. What did she do afterwards? Why didn't she blow a whistle? Why didn't she raise... Well, I'm hoping that she didn't think better I do was going to go, to go forward ahead with it because she, it's not... The fact that she approved. advised yes. her. So I would like to know what yes. happened there because during that investigation, she must also be questioned. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, she did the right thing. Yeah. But I'm saying that beyond doing the right thing, the state of things in this country means that you must also be willing to, in order to absolve yourself from any kind of blame, also make sure you, you um, there's a whistle being blown. Yes. And then... President Bolat Ahmed Tinubu, Nigerians are watching. The international community is watching. What are you going to do about this situation? I am hoping that before the end of today, 
we'll have an announcement that the minister, not because we have anything personal against her, but because we want to fight for the soul of this nation, Absolutely. and corruption must be a thing of the past, has been asked to step aside pending investigation, and whatever the outcome is, if found culpable, she must be um, made to pay the full. I mean, we cannot say that everybody is doing it, so let us leave. No, we, that narrative is gone. And so I hope that they will do something very decisive about this matter. Absolutely. The saga continues. We're still waiting for the investigation to unfold. We'll take another story. In Akwaibam State, where the recently completed State's International Worship Center is generating reactions online with some labeling the edifice as a misplaced priority. The former governor of the state, Udom Emmanuel, who built the church, has said that the building will be an altar that would perpetually draw God's blessings to the people of the state. Well, at the time of the construction in 2021, residents had also faulted the rationale behind the project worth over 32 billion naira. The state's governor, Umo Eno, in a post on X last week, disclosed that government officials and other political stakeholders held special Thanksgiving and New Year service at the worship center, sparking fresh criticism. Let me take one tweet quickly. Well, this person wrote, misplaced priority. How much revenue will this edifice generate to boost the economy of the state and lift the poor masses from multi-dimensional poverty? I thought the scriptures also wishes above all things that we prosper and be in health, even as our soul prosper it. I mean, I thought that tweet was quite apt. Did you see this edifice? I think we took the story when, you know, this construction was going on in 2021. This is quite appalling. 32 billion naira. When this money can go to hospitals, healthcare. factories, healthcare, healthcare, things that can, you know, improve the I mean, I believe that uh, Akwai Bomb has a lot of unemployment at this point. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very, it, very it high is, it is unemployment. the fifth, I believe, yeah. the lowest I mean, at I mean, this I mean, point. It's, it's very sad. Yes. It's very sad. Well, can, uh, can before, I just say that since it's been built, yes. can they turn it around? Because they cannot unbuild it. Yes. And I totally agree with you. But like the Sheikh Zayed mm. Mosque in Dubai, can they turn it into a tourist That's attraction a good point. where they can where yes, they can generate, generate revenue for the state? Because they've built it. Good and point. like you mentioned, I just hope that it would be a deterrent to other states as well. Yes. Let it now act. Let it bring some money in yes. terms of tourism to the so state. I, I, I think well. the point I want to make is, I don't know this over subscription to building big churches by states when their hearts are not clean, mm. when their hearts are corrupt. We build big churches. And it's not only in Nigeria, it's an African theology. Look at the case in Ghana. Yeah. Look at the Basilica in Yamasukro. People do a lot of evil and they are building big churches that's two it. billion there about when the people are suffering. They need to turn that church around, Rufai. Well, well, all right. In another development, though, the British Broadcasting Corporation is poised to release a three-part investigative documentary outlining alleged atrocities and sexual crimes attributed to late Pastor Temi Tokwe Balogun Joshua, widely known as TB Joshua. The pastor died on June 5th, 2021. The BBC interviewed at least 30 former members and workers of the Synagogue Church of All Nations, where the pastor presided before his passing as part of the investigation for the documentary. The first segment of the documentary is slated for release today, January 8th. In a short teaser, victims narrated their ordeal with the pastor. Let's take a look before we come back for a discussion. I will take what he did to me to the grave. It looked loving. Not knowing that behind that was a sadist, a psychopath. You have no idea of what I went through. A lot of women were being abused by this man. I had no idea. I thought I was the only one. You thought you were in the safest place in the world and you were in the most dangerous place. I didn't know that that thing had happened to anybody else. These are children of 16, 17 years. He kept all of us in slavery. Total, absolute slavery. All right, this documentary is out. I have actually seen it on YouTube. There are three parts to it. There was a lot of details that went on with this uh, investigation. It is still, you know, ongoing. Uh, you know, we've gotten some reports saying, they should, you know, people from his ministry saying that people should disregard the story. Some of it may be false. But I mean, this is up to the BBC at this point. I don't know if they are going to be, you know, throwing their repute under the bus for, you know, bringing out such a documentary at this point. I would like to take this story again tomorrow so we can discuss yeah. further because it's a big story. Shall we end what's trending today? Yeah.
by highlighting a young, optimistic Nigerian who is advocating for a better Nigeria in this short clip. The young lady advised Nigerians to stay focused on the good things the country has to offer and be less critical of the negatives while allowing President Bola Ahmed Tinibu breathe. Let's take a look. This one is tough for me to say, but dear Nigerians, you need to let Tinubu breathe. Don't suffocate him with your hatred. Some of you have intense hate for the presidency and for your country. Every small thing they vex you. Your cooking and your food bun, you say is the country that costs it. Something in your house will spoil, you say the country don't spoil. You're so bitter and the only thing that's on your mind is an escape route from this country. You cannot hate this country and want to prosper in it. And a lot of times when you're fixated on one thing, you're blinded to another. If you're so focused on leaving this country because it's so bad, you're not going to be able to see the opportunities that God may have put in place for you to flourish in this country. As much as they touch everybody one way or the other, there are people in this country that are shaking by whatever is happening. But that's not my point. No matter who it is targeted towards, bitterness, resentment, hatred, anger, all of that is not permissible for a child of God. I don't think because you're insulting the government and not a particular person with feelings it's allowed. Remember Jesus said it's not what goes in but what comes out of the mouth that defiles the person. So please honor your president and your country even with your words. After all you're the one that open your mouth and say I pledge Nigeria my country to uphold her honor and glory. <laughs> God will help you. Peace. This young lady has asked Nigerians to honor our president, and you cannot hate a country mm. and still be in it. We don't have much yeah, time I mean, left to go. Yeah, I think the last thing you said, may yes. God help us all. May God help us all. Difficult, <laughs> but may God help us yes, all. Absolutely. You cannot see things like this, people suffering, yeah. and keep quiet. It yeah. is difficult. Yes. So whilst we are praying for the president, we must yes. also, on the other hand, help the president yes. be better yes. by giving absolutely. him um, so um, you know, let, constructive let criticism. But let president so for me, I'm here to support president with my criticisms. Absolutely. I'm here to honor him with my criticisms. Yes. When he do when he does right, I will say he has done right. Absolutely. Right. When he does not do right, That's what we always I will preach, honor yeah. him with my criticisms. Yes. Because most importantly, is my country I want to do well. Yes. His position as president is transient. Yes. He cannot do more than eight yes. years. We want Nigeria to be great. Let's yeah. make Nigeria great again. I'm stealing that slogan. Well, I'd love to thank you both for your great analysis as always on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.